So technically, um, what we are doing here is we're going to talk about investment and um, many, many, many people that I've invited in this meeting, they know me as a trader and they know me as an investor. And then the, the main difference here is that what we are going to talk about here is long-term action. So we are not talking about um, putting your money at risk and expecting to um, take it off the market like uh, in a few months, we're talking about action that you're going to have to stay in it for like five, 10 and then long term. Okay. So, um, okay. Uh, people start getting in. Okay. All right. So what we're going to talk about here is especially um, in real estate. Okay. In the United States, real estate is very, um, it's a very, it's a, it's a very big market. I know that real estate made more millionaire than any other field. The reason is um, there's 10,000 ways to enter in real estate. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll quick and give you a little bit of explanation. Um, the, the, the most common way to enter in real estate is to buy a house. In the United States, um, if you want to buy a house, let's say that um, you've been working and then um, you manage to save enough money, let's say $30,000, $40,000. So generally, you want to buy a house. Let's say that you, you want about a $100,000 house, and that's the price of the house. And what you have to bring on the table is 20% of that money, which is um, $20,000. And then what you're going to do is look for a loan, and then you're going to ask for, you, you go ahead and contact the bank, and they give you a $80,000 loan, over a period of like 20, 30 years, it really depends on what your FICO score, your credit um, history allows you to do. But that's the most common way people get into real estate. The other part possibility is that people generally, the, um, they call them investors. They, they can, um, they buy property. Some of them, they buy houses and they put them in rental properties. They buy, um, different kind of uh, multiplex. A multiplex is a, is a building that can have many family at the same time. That's a form of investment. But this type of investment, they, li they literally require a lot of money and most people don't have that type of money. So the thing here is, um, if you have what it takes, um, if you are capable of getting information and building a strong team, um, real estate is very open. But what I'm talking about here is something very specific. I've, I've known about that for a while, but what we're going to talk about here is what they call real estate investment trust. So you can go in invest, Investopedia and do some researches. I'm not going to go over this entire um, document here, but the most important thing here is that some people, they don't want to get into the, the headache of dealing with tenants. Let's say that you have a house, you have a house and then you put it in rental. You, um, you get a tenant and that person is paying you every month. And with all the requirement, this is a commercial transaction. You're going to have to take care of the house. You're going to have to answer the calls anytime that person needs any service from you. The person might, need, you, might call you any, anytime in the middle of the night, you know, to take care of some kind of leaking problem or anything. Because that person, that tenant is your client. Some people, what they do is... They, they have rental property and then they look for property, sorry, management, management. So the, this, these companies, you get a contract with them and they manage the property for you. And of course, they, they generally take a big cut of that money and then whatever left is your income but still you are taking the risk. You still have to buy the property. You still have to make the deal and they are managing this for you. Now, this is a simple um, um, presentation about real estate, but this is not the main subject here. The subject here is especially around what we call a real estate investment trust. What they are, they are big corporation. And then what they do is they are buying real estate um, they are making real estate investment and then they are managing those real estate investment and then whatever profit they made, 
they have to, and this is the most important part about this, they are required by Congress to pay up to 90% of taxable income to the shareholder. Now, the main difference here is that when you are dealing with a property management company or let's say that you have a, a, a house and then you are doing real, uh, real estate, you're doing rental, the tenant is your client. But this is a little bit different. Those companies, the investors are the client. So the main goal here is to make sure that every shareholders are making as much money as they can get from that real estate investment. That is the main difference. And this is a structure. Um, you can go ahead, like I said, there's different type of real estate investment trust. And that's exactly what they, they, they're all doing. Now, the reason why I start with this is because the main subject is all about SPG, which is, um, which is Simon Property Group. If you don't get this, don't worry. We, I'm going to try to make it very simple. You get the basic. So here, this is my watch list of real estate investment trusts. These are all the real estate investment trusts that I'm interested in so far. The list was very long. And uh, I think that I had this watch list for more than a few, few months. But every time I see something that I don't like about the company, I remove it from my, my, my watch list. And until this morning, I, am, I was removing some of them. And I, based on my criteria, because I make my financial decision on my own and I have my own criteria. So these are the real estate investment trusts that I keep on my watch list. And there's a reason for, for, for that. Now, what I'm going to uh mention um okay so my watch list like i said i have some criteria i need them to be there but the most important thing here um this is about simon property group this is simon property group incorporation they are real estate investment trust and they are probably one of the best opportunity that i see so far and i'm gonna try to explain that real quick now, in order for you to understand the point, I know that it's easier to grab a concept if you have an element of comparison. So this list, they are, um, I put them in terms of size. The AMC, which is the American Tower Corporation, it's also a real estate investment trust, but they are bigger in terms of size. I'm gonna try to show you. Now, let's go in another shot. I'm gonna show you that here let's pull on this form now this is what they call the market capitalization of the company this american tower corporation it's a real estate investment trust remember they are renting in order for the investor to make money out of this and their size in terms of capitalization is 100 billion dollars this is what the company is worth right now when we're talking about this and there's many numbers here. We're not going to get into the detail of interpreting all these, but um, their balance sheet, technically, this is what they have in terms of debt and then the asset they're holding. So this is what the, their total asset. Um, this is the information. Let's say that um, your worth is how much, how much money they, they have to pay if, if they're going to have to buy the whole company. But the asset is those things that um, they can liquidate them. They can sell them in, in ever to, if ever they need to raise money. It's in, very interesting to keep that in mind. They're holding $40 billion in asset. And then they are, they are the biggest so far that I am interested in. Some of them, in order for a company to grab my attention, this company to have enough data for me to analyze. For an example, AMC, I've been, I have data since um, 1988. So that's, that's like three, three financial crises so far. And for me, that's, that's, that's decent. And I, could, I can go ahead and get uh, an idea of how, how this company behave in different situations in the market. Now, there's hoarders companies. I have buying hoarders for all of them. But I'm more interested in SPG because of the fact that SPG price is insanely low for for reason that I don't understand. If you have, 
I mean, there is no reason for that company to be that low in price. It's a good company. The company have been there way before AMC. When, when you consider their time, their record track, their track record, sorry. So they've been there like since 1980, since 1994. They have been through like two big financial crises. So this company give me enough data. I have enough data here to make analysis and get the point. Now, the interesting thing about this, what you need to understand is even if those two companies, they are doing the exact same thing, the main difference is how they are doing it. I'm going to focus on AMC and SPG, American um, Tower Corporation and Simon Property Group. And I'll pull out this image for you here. And this in order to make it simple, this is American Top um, AMT. I didn't know that, but this stuff are considered as real estate. They are, they are being rent like building, like apartment. So the interesting thing about AMT, kind of AMT will make you understand why SPG is important, is because when you um, open their in information about this company, they are operating in Asia. Europe, Africa, Latin American property services, and especially in communication. So anywhere in this planet Earth, there is a mobile device, plugging into the internet, sending text message, managing data. They are probably, they probably have something to do with AMC because these, they have been rent just like an apartment. If someone wanna put some device there, they're gonna have to um, contact the company who own the land, who own the tower, and then ask how much is the price, you know, just like you're renting an apartment. I didn't know that. I just realized that these stuff, they are considered as real estate, just like a building, just like a mall, just like a, a complex, of any of this stuff. Now, the um, SPG is doing the exact same thing, but they are doing this in commercial properties. And this is where the main difference. These are two companies that are operating under the same rule. They are obligated to pay 90% of their taxable income to their shareholder, to the investors. They have to do it. Um, they are operating under, under the same principle. It's just that they are doing it in a different market, but not a different market, just a different um, subdivision of the real estate market. Now, this is the interesting part about this. In order to understand why AMT is a real opportunity, the reason why I think it is, you have to go all the way back 20 years ago during the dot-com bubble, and we're gonna talk about AMT during the dot-com bubble. The dot-com bubble happened um, between 2000 and 2002. I have this box right there. And then that was when the internet was introduced to the public, when everybody was talking about it and everybody was about um, this new technology. And then, you know, everybody was into the internet. And, you know, when everybody's talking about something, you get everybody get euphoria and generally you get a crisis that happened in here. Now, the interesting thing about that is how AMC lose 98% of his value during that crisis. That is interesting because SPG during that same period of time did not reverse. Now, in technical analysis, when we are traders, um, a reversal, let me draw a pen. A reversal is um, when the market start a trend and then go all the way back behind the initiation of this trend. That is a reversal. But this is, a re, uh, it, this is what we call a correction or retracement. So the point here is that during the, 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 the dot-com bubble happens there, happens there. SPG did not really react to this crisis. The reason is the crisis was mainly in the technology industry. It was all about technology and this is SPG. So of course, when there's a crisis, every, every, everything in the market, they go down, but not like everybody. Those companies that are mainly 
related to that particular weak point of, in the economy, they tend to go down a little bit deeper than the others. And AMT went down 90, 98% during that crisis. Now, this is a comparison between two companies, once again, doing the exact same thing, operating under the exact same rules. They just behaving, they're just behaving differently just because of the fact that they are, are in um, a different part of the same business. Their focus are different. Now, uh, in, 2000, in 2008, we had another crisis. And what we have here is the um, real estate housing um, real estate housing crisis. In 2008, we had another crisis, but this crisis was about um, people that they, they, were, they, they were giving them loan, they were, they were having access to loan, they, were, they didn't, that they're not supposed to have access to because they were not eligible people. So we had that crash. If you want to know um, some stories about that, you can just go ahead and Google the 2008 market crash. And then you'll realize that these are two financial crises. They happen for different reasons. But here, the interesting thing here is the fact that this is the same crisis. Over here, AMT, American, American, the American Tower Corporation did not really react on that crisis. The reason is simple. I mean, AMT is mainly on the technology, technology real estate renting business. We meant they are doing the exact same thing, but SPG went down, went down seriously. Even though they are, they are here in more commercial, this kind of stuff, but people here that are working here, they are losing their houses in it this kind of stuff. And then you can see it in the chart and that was 2008, that was 2008. But now something is happening here that doesn't make any sense because the crisis that we are facing here is not the allergic and it's not real estate. The crisis here is an healthcare crisis. And for some reason, a company that is more than 20 years old, you can say it like that, is going down. And this is what I call an insane fear. This is the type of opportunity that happens once every 40 years in, 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 when you consider the entire industry. In order for you to understand that, we're going to go back on the, um, on the watch list. When I take a look at AMZ, in order to understand that, we're going to talk about this zone right there. This is an indicator. They call it the real, um, they call it, this indicator is the, give me a minute, whiteboard. This indicator, this game, this one right there is the relative strength index. The relative strength index is, is an indicator that, that, that give you a clear view on how uh, an asset price is behaving, um, the relationship between, um, between sellers and buyers. Okay, so anywhere under, anywhere between, between 30, and 30 and under the sellers, because we have a bunch of numbers here. Okay, so we're gonna open that. This is the RSI, we call them RSI. So you have a bunch of numbers here and every time we are around 30 and down, this means that people are trying to sell like crazy. And every time it's over 70, People are trying to buy like crazy. And just to make a quick comparison, I'm going to try to show you the reason why I am not buying Tesla now. It's because just by watching this list, just take a look at Tesla, and then you'll realize that Tesla have been over 70. I'm not buying anything here because people are too greedy about that, and I'm not interested in buying it. I'm not saying that the company is good, I'm not saying that the company doesn't have any kind of value. It's just that it's just too expensive for now. I'm not buying there. Now, we're just going to have to go back on the, the main subject. AMC, during the crisis, still managed to maintain a decent grid. This is interesting because that was in 2000. In 2000, we have this. People were worrying about the industry. They were selling. And here, this is fear. 
you know so if you're if you've been reading a little bit about warren you know that you're supposed to be greedy when people are they're afraid and when everybody have greed that someone you you have fear and this is worriness this is fear now i'm gonna go over vanguard index vanguard is a real estate investment trust one just the same thing same business but let's take a look at vanguard since 2005 2020 the only moment in their history they were insanely low was during the 2008 crisis. This is an insane fear. This is an unexplained fear. This people of this is uh, this is too extreme in terms of fear. And if you took that and you bought it, you could have get it at twenty bucks and ride that thing all the way down to ninety dollar. Now this sounds beauty. Beautiful, right? The most interesting thing about that is that these companies, they are required by Congress to pay dividend every four months. So one of the main difference between these companies and Amazon and Google is because Amazon don't pay dividend. Google don't pay dividend. Tesla, they don't pay dividend. So the only moment, the only profit you can make out of this company is if their stock price goes up. The difference here is that you get paid every four months here. Let's go on the equity residential. This is another real estate investment trust. This is 20 years of story. And this insane fear, you see that RSI under 30? This insane fear happened one time in almost 20 years. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and take another one. That's a public storage real estate investment trust. This is the same business, but um, this is, for example, AMC is real estate in this type of industry. And you have um, 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 SPG, they are renting malls and this is real estate. So if we can go a quick research and we, I'm gonna show you what P, P um, yeah, this is public storage public okay okay so they are doing this in public storage real estate let me get a quick image for you this will be um this will be psa right there so they are renting if if, if someone needs some extra space i mean you don't have enough space in your house your apartment and you, you need some extra space and then you can go ahead and you're probably gonna have to do something with PSA. I'm not interested in this. The, the only reason why PSA is still on my, on my watch list is because um, of their size. Yeah, it's because of their size, because um, they're like $30 billion in market cap. I'm still keeping them on my watch list. So the interesting part here is PSA has shown that insane fear back all the way back to October 90. And then if you did bought that thing at $6, you would have ride it all the way up. And remember, the price is going up like 3,000 and something percent profit. And this is the kind of thing that is happening in the stock market. This is not um, unregulated market. This is not volatile market. This is the type of market that almost everybody have access to. And the interesting thing about that is that the price is going up and you're still getting paid every form of, in form of dividend. Now, SPG is awesome. And when I say awesome, SPG is awesome as of now. And I think that you can see this. This is an insane fear. This is insane fear and this is happening now. Okay, so... Here, the interesting thing about um, this thing, they have good dividend, just like every single real estate investment trust. They have to pay you every month. They are insanely low. They have a very long time doing this. So they have like, uh, like almost 20 years in this business. This is the type of company that I just close my eyes and buy their share. I just close my eyes and start buying. So. The other interesting thing about SPG is their holding. This company, the only reason why they have, their market cap is $15 billion. That's a little bit, that's almost nine times 
um, because AMT is uh, uh, around 20, uh, 10 times bigger than SPG in terms of market capitalization. If you, have four, if you have $16 billion, you can buy this company right now if they're selling. But the reason why the market cap is that low is because of their balance sheet. Because when they are considering your value in terms of market cap, they consider your debt and your debt, they are minus. And, uh, you know, they, they are minus in your record. And that's the reason why it's 15 billion. Because this company actually own 34 billion in real estate investment. That's how much house they own. The re only reason why the market cap is low is because of their balance sheet. Maybe they have to be deal they have been dealing with a couple of new projects. Maybe they were building. I know that in Jacksonville, I don't know if it's Jacksonville, but they were building new malls and stuff. Maybe they were doing some kind of investment. Now, Interesting thing here, like I said, this crisis is not a real estate crisis. This is an impact of the crisis on SPG, and SPG doesn't have any reason to be that low. A good value, a good company, as valuable as SPG at that very particular moment, and we know that opportunity happens during crisis, at that price, I am buying. And I am buying hard, like real hard. I have some orders. I have some orders on 150, 30. I think, um, you know, I have a special chart just for them. Yeah, so I have orders around that. So I have all the reason in Hearth to buy that company. Everything is like, everything that I'm looking for is there. And this is insanely low. 17 RSI, you know, I am buying this. So the point here, um, I don't know if I did go over everything. Um, we are like 27 minutes. Yeah, so I did go over everything that I wanted to say. So I don't know if you guys want to have questions, if you, if you have, uh, if, some, if everything is clear. So I'll let you talk or I'll let you ask questions if you have some questions. I think we have like two or three minutes left.